Okay, so so here I present the first point of cutting. So we said we want in four pieces. So if we like, if we don't cut on a three by three, it might be a little bit too tricky. So let's just do do that first. And then we have this region, which we want like make it some kind of L shape, or, or like a more equal sided L shape. So we do this kind of staircase method where we slice this one down, up, down. So we have this L shape, and we can cut this two by two piece in to make it more perfect. So I will leave it to our audience to find the third measure. Okay? This measure is good, it's completely protect the three by three. You don't need to do it. The other measure, even the three by three coming from two pieces, and the four by four also coming from two pieces. Right? But the good thing is to understand this kind of sliding. Sliding has to appear somewhere in this plan of power. Okay? So you also build some kind of staircase to allow you to do that. Okay, so now time for number five. Um, so in this problem, we have 15 letters. They're A through O, and they're in a curve like this. And they have the numbers 1 through 15 in some order. Um, and then, just like problem one, we cannot have a large number on top of a small number. So, unlike problem one, our curve looks very different. In problem one, it looks like this, and E is underneath both B and C. Over here, we already see we have something different. So we're going to have to try something a little bit different. Well, first of all, it's clear that A has to be equal to one, right? Because otherwise, there's no way, nowhere else for one to go. Um, so now, we have two completely separate halves of the curve. There's this side and this side. So the actual numbers that we pick don't really matter. All that matters is the order in which they are. So we can we choose, explain that part a little bit more. Right. So yeah. I can choose any seven numbers for B, D, E, H, I, J, K. And then once I choose those seven numbers, um, the number of ways I can assign them to these seven letters is not going to depend on what the numbers themselves are. It's only going to depend on their order. So technically for this, we don't need to be, if we pick any other 15 numbers, it doesn't even they, are they, they are distinct. As long as they're then they are the same number of arrangements. Yes. Right? Okay. You just need to put them in order of their way. Yes. So I can start by picking seven out of the remaining 14. Um, to go on this side, and then the rest of them will go on this side. So once I have our seven numbers here, we know the smallest one has to be. That's forced. So let's suppose that we pick two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this has to be B. Right? And then now again we have two halves. There's D H9 and there's E J and K. And just like before, um, it doesn't really matter. Like once, once we've picked the three numbers that go here, it doesn't matter what they are, it just matters that they're in some order. That's three three, distinct, three numbers. distinct numbers. So we'll pick three more numbers to go over here. And then the other three becomes automatic, right? Yeah. Because we only have six, six letters chosen. Right. right, so we pick three with the remaining three that have to go there. Very good. Um, and then once we pick our three numbers, say there are three, four, and five, clearly D has to be three. The smallest one. Because it's the smallest one. And then this can be 4, 5, or 5, 4. It doesn't matter. Another 2. So we multiply by 2. On this side, um, it means we're left with 6, 7, and 8. Right? So this has to be 6. The smallest one again. The smallest one again. Um, and then these two can go in either order. So I'll square the 2. And now we look at this side. And then it's actually the same, the same problem. So this 6 choose 3 times 2 squared. This entire part can be squared, I guess. And this is our final answer. So when we plug it into a calculator, there's a big number. Yeah, some big number. Yes. <laughs> so as an exercise, we should ask our students to do what if there's one more layer. Yeah. Right? And see if you really get the answer right. 